Okay, in this last video, I'm going to look at mostly unit conversions and dimensional analysis. But first, I wanted to talk about uh, precision and accuracy. So we're pretty familiar with accuracy, right? How, how correct we are with our measurement or calculation. Um, precision, we may not be as familiar with. And so what I did here is I gave a data set. I've got two groups of students, A and B, and they're trying to determine the density of aluminum. And group A gets three trials worth of density calculations. So the first trial gives them a density of 2.63, second 2.62, and the third is 2.63 grams per milliliter. Then group B, they also do three trials. They get 2.55 for their first density, 2.85, and then 2.7. Um, when you average your three trials, group A had an average of 2.63 grams per milliliter. Group B had an average of 2.70 grams per milliliter. So when we look at accuracy and precision, and you'll see this in our, in our lab this semester, we're gonna have multiple trials, so I am gonna start to look at both accuracy and precision. When we look at accuracy, we look at how close you are to the actual value. So accuracy, actual value. So if we know that the actual density of aluminum is 2.70, when I look at group A versus group B, I can see that group B had better accuracy. So group B had better accuracy because their average density was the exact actual density of aluminum. So their average of 2.7 was spot on. So they had better accuracy. Now precision, what you look at for precision is like the repeatability or the range of your answers. So when I look at group B, their range went from 2.55 all the way up to 2.85. Whereas with group A, they just went from 2.62 to 2.63. So group A had much better precision. The range of their answers was very small. They, that means they, when they did it over and over and over again, they did it pretty much exactly the same way because they got exactly the same answer. Um, but with B, their answers were more varied, right? More greatly varied, a bigger range. So that doesn't suggest great precision, but it turned out that their average was spot on for, the, for accuracy. So you look at your average, compare it to the actual, whichever one's closer, right? That is accuracy. But when you look at the range of the data, right? Or the range of the density calculations in this case, the, the group that has the smaller range of answers has better precision. So that's accuracy versus precision. Now the final section with dimensional analysis, right? This is where we're gonna do our unit conversions. And same thing, if you had me last semester for intro chem face-to-face, -face, you're gonna recognize these, right? One inch is 2.54 centimeters, a kilogram is 2.205 pounds, and a milliliter is the same as a cubic centimeter. But there's a new one here, and it's actually one I use quite a bit for some reason, but one gallon is 3.785 liters. It's a good one to know. If you had me for the online intro chem, the conversions were given to you, and that won't be the case this, this semester. So you wanna memorize these four conversion factors along with the six prefixes that I identified in the, in the second video for this chapter. So what we're gonna do in this set of practice questions is we're gonna practice our, our unit conversions. The first one here I did for you, it has 76.3 millimeters and we wanna convert it to meters. That's just a prefix change, right? We're just getting rid of the milli prefix. With dimensional analysis, you always start with what you're given and then get the unit that you wanna cancel out has to go in the denominator, right? We need to cancel out our units and the unit that you're looking for goes in the numerator. And what we remember when we were talking about milli is we replace milli with 10 to the negative third. So as I was mentioning on the previous video, if it's more comfortable for you to say, okay, 76.3 millimeters, and then a thousand goes with the milli, so a thousand millimeters and a meter, it's the same thing. You're gonna get the same answer. Um, so either way is acceptable. Again, I'm just kind of going in this, this new textbook pathway, right? So just replacing milli with 10 to the negative third. So I'd have 76.3 times 10 to the negative third, and my answer then would be 0 0.0763 meters, all right? The next question, we're gonna go from kilometers to feet, 
And sometimes it's going to be multiple steps and it helps maybe to put a little flow chart in. So first thing I think of is kilometer, I'm going to go to meters because that's just a prefix. From meters, I could go to centimeters, same thing, just a prefix. From centimeters, I can go to inches. And then I gave you the conversion there from inches to feet. So if this were a quiz or a test question, I would give you this conversion. I know a lot of you would be like, all right, I remember that, inches to feet. But on test day, you get stressed out. You're like, I don't know. I don't trust my memory. <laughs> so if it's not one of those four conversions, right, if you need an additional one, I will give it to you. All right, so I would give you 12 inches and a foot. So we're going to map this out. We got 0.556 kilometers, all right? First conversion, getting rid of kilo, going to the base unit of milli. We're going to replace the kilo with 10 to the third. So one kilometer is 10 to the third meters. Then in the next conversion, going from meters to centimeters, we're going to replace the centi with 10 to the negative two. Then in the next one, we've got 2.54 centimeters is equal to an inch. And then in the last one, we've got 12 inches is equal to a foot. All right, so on the calculator, I would take 0.556. Just typing this in, I would type it in times one EE to the three, right? That EE key for the exponent. And then I would divide by one EE to the negative two. And then I would divide by 2.54 and divide that by 12, right? And the answer I get here, 1824.1469. 9, 8, etc., right, which is way more precise than we need it to be. We go back, our original measurement has three significant figures. The conversions do not limit the sig figs, the measurement does. So we go with three sig figs for the answer. So the 1, 8, and the 2, right, would be our significant figures. What we're cutting off is 4 or less. So we have two options. We can just replace the 4 with a 0 or scientific notation, 1.82 times 10 to the third feet, right? And even though it doesn't sound right, 1.82 kilofeet, <laughs> that would be correct, right? Because times 10 to the third could be replaced with kilo, all right? The next one, we're gonna practice an area conversion. So when you look at this next one, we've got 476 squared centimeters, and we wanna convert that to square inches. What we know is that there are 2.54 centimeters in an inch, but that's not the same as squared centimeters or square inches. So when you look at doing these types of conversions where the unit is either squared or cubed, you want to make sure that the unit is correct, right? It has to cancel out. So since I'm starting with squared centimeters, I have to cancel out squared centimeters and I need to go to squared inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this conversion, which is just one dimensional, right? It would just be for length, and I'm going to square it so that it, it will work for both length and height. So two dimensions. So I'm going to take my 2.54 and square it. And when I do that, sorry, I typed something in wrong. Let me try that again. I get 6.4516. So I just squared the 2.54. And then on top, the 1 squared would stay 1. So now if I type everything in, 476 divided by 6.4516, to three significant figures, I would get 73.8 squared inches. All right. Now, if you on the test or quiz maybe put 6.45, thinking that's three sig figs, so I'll just keep that as three, I can live with that. I'd be, you know, it's totally fine if you did it that way. I just went ahead and kept all the digits from the calculator. All right, next example. Oops, and I actually showed you that on the next page. So you can see it. What I did is I squared everything. Sorry, I didn't realize there was a break. But there's my same answer. So the 2.54 squared is where I got that 6.4516 from. All right, for the next one, we have 1.56 times 10 to the fourth cubic inches, and we want to go to cubic meters. So again, a little pathway. I think we're going to first have to go inches to centimeters and then centimeters to meters. But be careful because everything here is cubed. So we're going to have 1.56 times 10 to the fourth cubic inches. And then in this conversion here, 
I'm going to show it. We have one inch is 2.54 centimeters, but I need to cube that. So on the bottom, inches cubed to go away. The one cubed would stay one. Centimeters cubed on top. And then the 2.54 cubed. Again, if you want to only do three sig figs, I can live with that. But I usually do 16.387. Just, I don't know, I feel like that's it's more exact, but if you rounded that to 16.4, I can live with that. So we got rid of cubic inches, we went to cubic centimeters. Then in the next one, we need to get rid of cubic centimeters and go to cubic meters. And what we remember is a centimeter is 10 to the negative two meters, right? But we'll have to cube that, right? Sorry, let me speak that over. So one cubed would just stay one, all right? 10 to the negative 2 cubed, right, so multiply, would become 10 to the negative 6. So on my calculator, I'm going to take the 1.56 EE to the 4, multiply by 16.387, and then multiply that by 1 EE to the negative 6. And what I get here is 0.256, only three significant figures meters cubed. All right, so when you multiply or have a power with your exponents, right? Um, sorry, I got distracted. Um, basically, you, you need to make sure for the three-dimensional, right, the one centimeter is 10 to the negative two meters. We're trying to make sure and do that conversion three times, so it's cubed. Sorry, that three was partially on the next page. So that's why we've got to cube everything inside. So one cubed stays one, centimeters cubed, meters cubed, and then 10 to the negative two, basically times 10 to the negative two times 10 to the negative two. You're, you're adding negative two, negative two, negative two. So you get a total of negative six. But when you do the power, you're just multiplying it. So negative two times three gives you a negative six on the power. All right, last one here, we've got 14.70 pounds per inches squared, and we want to convert it to kilograms per meter squared. So we're going to have to convert two different units here, so we're going to have to keep track of two different things. So I have 14.70 pounds per inches squared, and I'm going to write it that way to make it a little bit easier for me to keep track of the units. The first conversion, 2.205 pounds, is equal to a kilogram. So that's one of the conversion factors that I want you to memorize. And for that one, I've, I always remembered pounds is the bigger number. That made it easy for me to stick. So pounds is bigger than kilogram in terms of the number. Pounds is the bigger number. Now in the next conversion step, I wanna be careful. I've canceled out pounds. So now if I sort of cover that with my finger and now I look at my inches, inches squared is gonna go on the top because I need it to cancel out. And we're gonna to go to centimeters first. And like we saw earlier, an inch is 2.54 centimeters, but we're gonna to have to square that because that's what the unit tells us to do. So one squared, and then on the bottom, that 2.54, remember that was 6.4516. So now we've converted inches squared to centimeters squared. And then the last one here, we're gonna get rid of centimeters squared and go to meters squared. And one centimeter is 10 to the negative two meters, but squaring that means it would be 10 to the negative four. So now we've canceled out centimeters squared and we go to meters squared. So on my calculator, 14.70 divided by 2.205 divided by 6.4516 and then divided by one EE to the negative four. And I get an answer here of 10,333.354. I'm gonna type it in one more time because I always, I don't know, I always do that. 2.205 divided by 6.4516 and then divided by one EE negative four. All right. Then when I look at for my significant figures, I want four, right? That zero is a significant 14.70. That zero is a sig fig. It's at the end of the value. There's a decimal present. So we want four significant figures for the answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and round, or sorry, put in the scientific notation. 
moving the decimal one, two, three, four spots. So 1.033 times 10 to the positive four since we moved it to the left. And the units we have are kilogram per meter squared. All right, so that would be our answer for that unit conversion. All right, then the last one here is, is how do we use density as a conversion step? So earlier we talked about finding density, but if density is known, how can I relate that or use that to relate mass and volume? So question is, what is the volume in gallons of 10 kilograms of methanol, density 0.791 grams per milliliter? So if we think about this, we're starting with our mass. So always start with the mass or volume. Density is gonna work as a conversion factor. And the way you can think about it is, when it says grams per milliliter, that's the same as 0.791 grams that that per, right, this slash right here, that's an equivalence line. So that's the same as an equal sign, and it equals a milliliter, one milliliter. So that's gonna be a conversion step. So we're gonna start with our 10.0 kilograms. Our unit of mass that we have here is kilograms, but in the density, our unit of mass is grams. So we're gonna convert grant to grams first. So one kilogram is 10 to the third, or 1,000 grams. Next conversion. 0.791 grams is equal to a milliliter. Now we need to go to gallons. And we remember one milliliter is 10 to the negative three liters, because milli is 10 to the negative three. And the new conversion for this semester, 3.785 liters is equal to a gallon. And so these three conversions, right, these are to memorize. So liters to gallons, memorize. It's on your list. And then the milli prefix you want to memorize and the kilo prefix, right, you would memorize. The density would be given. That would be given to you in the question. So I'm going to take my 10.0, multiply it by 1 times 10 to the 3, and then divide it by 0.79, and then multiply it by 1 times 10 to the negative 3, and then divide that by 3.785. And so what I get here to three sig figs is 3.34 gallons. So that would be our volume of methanol that would, that would have a mass of 10 kilograms. All right, the last section here is uh, temperature conversions. I've got the formulas that we need to remember to convert between Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. Um, uh, just know there's no direct formula for Fahrenheit to Kelvin. You've gotta go to Celsius first. And the rule with all of your temperature conversions is you want to keep the same decimal place as the original measurement, not the sig figs, but the decimal place. So the first example here that I did for you, you've got 85 Celsius and you want to convert it to Fahrenheit. So first multiply by 1.8, add it to 32, round it to 185. We've gained a sig fig, but that's okay because we're keeping the precision to the ones place. That's what the rule says. For the next one, we're gonna go 335 Celsius to Kelvin. So we take that 335. The formula is to add 273.15. When I add the 273.15, I'm gonna keep the ones place of the original measurement. So this would just round to 608 Kelvin. So we keep it to the ones place. For the next one, we've got negative 20.8 Fahrenheit, and we want to round that to Kelvin. We have to go to Celsius first. So we're going to use that middle formula. We've got negative 20.8 Fahrenheit. We're going to first subtract 32, then we're going to divide by 1.8. With this formula, it's important that you get the answer from that first subtraction step. So if I take negative 20.8, and subtract 32, I want to make sure and hit enter. Get that answer, negative 52.8 divided by 1.8. And the reason why you need to do it that way is on the calculator, it does the order of operations, right? So if you type it in negative 20.8 minus 32 divided by 1.8, it's going to do the division step first. And you don't want that. You want it to do the parentheses first. So always subtract, hit enter, get your answer. 
divide by 1.8, and now you have your temperature in Celsius. So negative 20.8 is the same as, in Fahrenheit, is the same as negative 29.3 in Celsius. Then to that, I'm gonna add the 273.15 to get to Kelvin. So if I take my 29.3 negative, add it to 273.15, I get here 243.9 Kelvin. All right, now on this particular example, if I kept all of my digits in after I got my Celsius, it would have been negative 29.33333. If I then added it to 273.15, it turned out that I, I would get 243.8, right, instead of 0.9. It's okay either way, right? So you, either way, I can see your work, I can see your process. So if that last digit's off by one, it's okay. It's just for rounding and that's all right. So that completes my uh, first set of notes um, for chapter one. So this video focusing on conversions. Um, so hopefully that helps.